Hello, it is Dan from Dan'sFish.com, your friendly fishmonger here, and today we're going to talk about Barbotus dunkeri, the clown barb. Used to be called Barbotus everetti or Puntius everetti, um, everetti, everetti, eh. anyway, but um, the most current classification is Barbotus dunkeri. Clown barbs, they're awesome. Um, big bold black markings, bright red fins outlined in black. Really beautiful fish, really active, and let's take a look. All right, so here they are, a group of clown barbs. Um, they're a ton of fun. They're attacking a clump of rapashi right now. And this video was taken oh, a couple months ago, shortly after I imported them. They've since doubled in size, and um, that kind of faint red color you can see on their fins, today it's bright red bright bright red outlined with a black edge and the black on the body is dark dark black so they've achieved their adult coloration now and they're really beautiful and the ones I have for sale now are about two to two and a half inches the fish in the in the video you're watching right now were only about one inch when the video was taken so they're the same fish that I have for sale they've just uh, grown quite a bit since they arrived and they're totally ready for sale now they're in great shape they put on some size and they're they're awesome now something about these barbs these are from uh, Singapore and Malaysia um, most of the fish though in the hobby most of the clown barbs you'll find at the stores are are bred on farms which is great because it takes you know the pressure off the the wild populations these are definitely farm bred the ones that I have for sale um, and if you notice I just pay attention to what they do to the food so see how you that big ball of clowns <laughs> just attacking that food this is the only thing you have to bear in mind when you when you keep them with other fish they're very peaceful but they get about four inches maybe a little bigger but this is how they act when food hits the water they're very quick and they just ball up on it so they're fine with other fish you just have to make sure that the other fish can still get it some food if they have these guys in the tank with them and that's true for almost all barbs for odessa barbs for tiger barbs for lots of different barbs um, filament barbs the dakinsoni species um, all those guys almost all barbs are fantastic a, a lot of them are are fairly peaceful clown barbs are a little aggressive but but a lot of barbs are quite peaceful but this is how they act they're very boisterous and very quick so that is what you have to keep in mind uh, when you're planning your aquarium if you want barbs in it and they do great with other species that can do this um, they do great with rainbow fish they do great with lots of tetras um, they do fine with live bearers uh, as long as the live bearers are quick moving like sword tails and platies and things like that maybe not long fin guppies but um, they're a ton of fun to watch though I mean this is entertaining <laughs> this is absolutely entertaining one day I'm gonna set up, set up an aquarium with a couple goal posts in it like soccer and uh, throw a piece of food in and, and we'll film a fishy soccer match <laughs> as they move it around the tank um, but these guys eat a lot they eat quick now that being said they're pretty cool fish to watch um, and right now their colors are brilliant not not on the video in the video they're just barely starting to get their color because they're just an inch but right now the ones that are for sale are, are brilliantly colored and when you add that with this kind of fun behavior uh, they're a neat fish to have they're, they're a true aquatic pet I would say um, now they, they come from um, fairly clean water in the wild so you're gonna want to keep their tank clean um, you know water changes help a ton with that uh, they like a lot of oxygen obviously they're a quick swimming fish um, they're pretty active so they need to keep their oxygen content up high and in the wild they tend to come from more of a river type system where the water's flowing and fresh oxygen is constantly being absorbed into the environment so just keep that in mind they have a wide temperature range um, I've always kept them in the mid 70s but um, the internet says about 64 degrees on up to 80 degrees is fine um, I haven't tested that but anywhere in the 70s would be f just great for them for sure but if you have a, a colder basement aquarium or something like that um, this might be a species that if if your tank gets a little chilly in the winter down in the um, low 70s or upper 60s this might be a good one for you to look into again research that a little bit more on your own that's just stuff I've read online I've never done it myself um, 
But anyway, look at how they <laughs> look at them. They're like <laughs> they're like peaceful piranhas. I mean, just the big mass of them around that food. Again, a ton of fun to watch, but something you have to keep in mind because if you have a big group of these in a tank and you have some slower swimming fish in it, then it's going to be difficult to get those fish uh, some food. And something else you should know is the barbels on these guys. Um, they're a little hard to see now, but in a little bit we'll cut to a different shot of them against the spawning mop. And you'll see some of their barbels, which are these kind of these feelers they have, um, uh, almost like cat whiskers, if you will, um, on the side of their mouth, kind of below their mouth. That allows them to sense food in the dark. Um, if the water were really murky or something like that where they came from, then they would use those barbels in those situations. Uh, say, say it's the rainy season and the, the river is just, you know, flooded with all kinds of sediment. They can still feed really well by feel. And maybe they, those might smell a little bit as well or taste a little bit as well. But anyway, those sensory organs allow them to eat in the dark. So keep that in mind that... Um, you know that common trick that we have of feeding catfish in the dark? So there's corridors in this aquarium in the video. I had to remove them though because even though I would feed the corys after the lights went out, the barbs would still eat the majority of the food by using their barbels to sense it. So um, if you didn't have a huge group though, you could totally get away with other fish in the tank with them. Um, you know, you could spread the food around enough that they could get to it and that everyone would get a full meal. But I just wanted to show that behavior and talk about that a bit because I think that's one of the main challenges of keeping barbs in rainbows for that matter and other um, kind of boisterous, fast swimming fish that are peaceful. They're not aggressive. They're just quick. Um, and if you can solve that issue, then you're in good shape. Uh, a couple tricks are feed floating food on one side and then throw some sinking food on the other side. So while the fish are distracted on one end, the other fish can eat on the other end. Um, you can rig up all types of things to make it work, but you do have to be aware of that issue. Um, so these guys are totally freshwater fish. Um, they are egg scatterers, so they'll go in a spawning mop like this or in, the, in nature into plants and things like that and they will uh, lay a bunch of eggs and then they'll just forget about them and the, the eggs will hatch, they'll be teeny teeny tiny and um, a lot smaller than a killifish um, maybe even smaller than a rainbow fish fry at first, not free swimming or anything like that at first and um, they are a bit of a challenge to raise but if you have rotifers or paramecium or um, infusoria things like that, then you can get them going. Vinegar eels, things like that can really help. But they're an easy fish to spawn. The challenge is getting those tiny, tiny little fry um, past the first week or so. And once you've done that, you're good. You can feed them uh, microworms and, um, you know, baby brine shrimp and some of those easier foods. But, um, but up till that point, they, they can be a challenge just because they're so darn small, even smaller and less developed than, than rainbow fish. Um, Something else about this fish to keep in mind as well is it, it's not a huge fish by any means, but adults can get it four inches or a little above. You know, that's, that's pretty good size for a lot of our aquariums. So if you only have a 10 gallon, it might not be the right fish for you for sure. I mean, they, they like a lot of space to swim. But if you have a, a big enough tank and they can swim and, and be themselves, then sure, go ahead. Um, I think you could get a, a few of them into a maybe a three foot footprint tank but a four footer over would be fantastic i mean that's what i keep them in they're in a 75 gallon and it gives them enough room that with that big bunch of them um, they can swim and be themselves and have a good old time and um you know you don't you, they don't feel hampered at all um so that's what i would recommend a three foot tank probably minimum four foot or above footprint, um, 55 gallon-ish or above would be ideal, especially if you had, you know, a larger group of them. Now they eat everything. I mean everything. They're very opportunistic in the wild and they'll feed at all levels. They'll feed at the top of the aquarium, the middle of the aquarium, the bottom of the aquarium. Um, they tend to hang out 
on the middle and bottom most naturally, but they'll definitely go up and eat at the surface if there's food there. So they're no problem to feed flakes, pellets, frozen foods, live foods, rapashi, gel foods, um, whatever you have, they're going to eat it. And they need a wide variety. They're um, omnivores in the, in the wild. They'll eat vegetable matter. They'll eat detritus. They'll eat insects. They'll eat other fish. They'll eat crustaceans. They eat a little bit of everything. So make sure you give them a good balanced diet. And the key to that, of course, is to feed lots of different kinds of foods. Um, and then you're never in the danger of you know, having some kind of deficiency in the diet. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, water parameters don't seem to be important for these guys. I've seen them kept in really hard water. I have really soft water. Um, as long as it's clean, they seem to do just great. Um, and the females are pretty as well as the males. So that's a nice thing about this fish. Um, the females look pretty good too. So um, there's, you know, you don't have to worry about sex ratio if you're looking for a, a beautiful aquarium. You can get that with males and females, unlike some species where females can be a little bit drab. Um, but anyway, that's, that's kind of the rundown on the clown barb. Beautiful fish, active. All right, so there you have it, the clown barb. Uh, <laughs> car full of clowns, they're pretty awesome. So um, if you have any questions about this fish or want to get a discussion going, please leave some comments below. I'll happily reply and we can talk about them. Anyway, until next time, this is Dan from DansFish.com, and uh, I hope you have a great day.